All right, there we go. Right here, the Omer Rizal, the rabbis say, There are three things that the world stands on. Al Torah and Al Avoda, etc. Hine Avoda, that's the sacrifices. That's the sacrifices. This is talking about the same thing as we had before. The Jewish people provide for God. That's what it means. Levavatni, that we control, so to speak, God's heart. That's the way God set up the world. That's how He set up the world. We really are being created by God all the time. We don't have any existence on our own. But <clears throat> nevertheless, God set up the world that we have an effect on him. Okay, Hine. Avoda. What is the service of God? Of Three things the world stands on. Torah, Avoda, and Gemil Chasadim. Torah is learning Torah. Avoda means prayer. And Gemil Chasadim means acts of kindness. But really, Avoda means work. The true thing of avoda is the sacrifices. Nowadays, we don't have a temple, so we, prayer is in the place of the sacrifices. And corresponding to them, now today we have prayer. Um, but let's explain. That's what avoda. What is Torah? Torah, that's we're going to see. Torah is going to be the bread for God. Because if it says, Zos Torah, Adam, this is the Torah of man. This is the Man, which is on the throne of God. This is on the vision that Isaiah saw. Kamara Adam. It says that he saw the vision of a man on the throne. So what, why is God called a man? We know that God doesn't have any form. But on the other hand, we know that God definitely does have a form. Namely, the commandments. The commandments are called the limbs of God. The 248 commandments are called the Positive commandments, 248 positive commandments are called the limbs of God. <clears throat> what does it mean? Kamosha of Orm, just like limbs. Ham Kalim, they are vessels. Vumishkan, and they are receptacles. Lam Shachas to draw down life from the soul. Amit Pashet, which goes, which goes from the soul into each and every limit, limb. According to its nature, the eye sees, the ear hears, the hands move. Same thing as the commandments. <coughs> the commandments are limbs of God. They are vessels. And they are receptacles. Shashar is that they can rest in them, the orange soul, infinite light of God. The God's infinite light of God that surrounds all the worlds. We talked before, if you remember last week, there's two aspects of God. That's what how God fills the world. That's, so to speak, what God does. And then there's God surrounding the world. That's what God is. The commandments, that reveals what God is. Hashorah mislabesh bohem v'tochem. This is the pure godliness, the essence of God, which is in the commandments. V'vechines yishalkus, that they're divided up. Habshacha, of God's blessing. Call mitzvah mitzvah each commandment according to its level. But call them shachat and all these drawing down, they come from the level of Soviet column. How God surrounds the worlds. Chu and yin bitol. This is what it means surrendering to Oren So you want to have God revealed in the world, it can only really be done through the commandments. Like it was on Mount Sinai. Each commandment is a mini Mount Sinai. We don't see it. We don't feel it. But that's because the world is so thick. In the days of the Mashiach, the world won't be so thick. And we'll see the holiness of the commandments. Shekalin and Torah, the whole thing of Torah and the commandments, are just garments made from physical things. Planting, giving tithes, sacrifices, the whole Torah deals with physical things. Why? It's in order to draw down into these physical things the pure light of God, which is creating all these things. Oh, excuse me. Today, in order... Ah, ah. Yeah, that there should be... I'm sorry. Knock the camera over. 
the day that there should be whoa. Kadei, in order the to draw down into them the light of God, Morachu. Kadei, in order that there will be Yesh, the physical world that comes from what's called Klippat Noga. It's called nature, shining Klippa. That it should be Batal Venichla Borin Sof Morachu. Okay, what's this idea of being Batal? Like, for instance, a person, God forbid, he's got problems with his stomach, he's got problems with his heart. <coughs> He has problems with his lungs. It's hard for him to digest. He has an ulcer. He has some sort of a heart murmur. He has trouble breathing. So what do you do? You go to a doctor, and the doctor fixes it up so that the stomach becomes buttle. The stomach works in harmony with the rest of the body. It does its job. It doesn't stick out. That's called bittle. Everybody has a heart. Everybody has lungs. If, when you don't feel your heart and your lungs, when they work the way they're supposed to do, they don't stick out. That's called bittle. That's healthy. The world is sick. By do, means of doing the commandments, we make the world healthy. That's what's called bittle. The world becomes the way it's supposed to be. It's working properly. That's the positive commandments. The negative commandments, that's to get rid of the bad to separate ourselves from negative things. Okay, and therefore, Nikra Torah, the Torah is called bread. Why? Like it says, Lachu, come, lachmu belachmi, partake of my bread, says God. Kamo, just like bread, sha'al of yichi adam, that by means of bread, a person becomes alive. Key, because agam she'ikar chayus, even though the main life of a person what keeps a person alive? His soul keeps him alive. Bread doesn't keep him alive. Give a person, a dead person, and put bread in his stomach, doesn't do anything. <coughs> the bread doesn't keep you alive. It's your soul that keeps you alive. But bread causes the soul to be stuck in the body, to stay in the body, that it won't go away from the body. Bread just connects the soul to the body. Urak Mechaber just joins the life of the soul with the body. That's what the bread does. It's like glue that sticks the soul, connects the soul and the body. But nevertheless, Hamshach is whatever you want to call it, whatever it does. If a person doesn't eat bread, he's in bad shape. If he doesn't eat anything, <coughs> but bread especially. Nevertheless, drawing down life of the soul. <coughs> attaching the soul to the body who is machmas is because of the bread because the bread who goram this is what causes that life will be drawn into the body which is not case other foods <coughs> and drinks they are mostly for pleasure the main thing that draws life into a person is bread. You can get along by eating potatoes. You can get along. There's some people that don't like bread, but nevertheless, bread is the staple. Normal people eat bread. That's what that's the staple of man. It's the same thing as Torah and the commandments. Hema, they are what causes the Torah and the commandments does like bread. They draw down the connecting of the soul of the world, namely or and so this level of God, how God surrounds the world, the essence of God, the low me call me this call that God is not any of his attributes at all. <coughs> that aspect of God is called Rebon Almin, is the master of the worlds. Lamila above all the worlds, it causes it lead Labesh to be clothed in the worlds. That's what the commandments do. They're like bread. They join the soul with the body. In this case, the soul is the essence of God with the world. And to God, you are wise with no new wisdom. 
Now we have to remember another very, very basic principle of Judaism. And Hasidut really brings this out like nothing else. Like no other, other brand, no other <clears throat> philosophy or whatever. That the world is tremendously important to God. The world is of utmost importance to God. Much more important than all the spiritual levels in the heavens <clears throat> that are promised <clears throat> as a reward to us. All those things are just like <clears throat> how do you say the you know the, they used to when a person used to retire, they used to give him a gold watch. <clears throat> it's like getting a pension, you know, getting a gold watch, putting in the in the home for the elderly. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what the heavens are like. The main thing is this physical world. In this physical world, God gets pleasure. In this physical world. <clears throat> Ideally, we get the pleasure of God, joy. Who beginneth sedaka? This is the commandments. By means of the, I'm sorry, I skipped my skip lens. The <clears throat> aliyade by means of the Torah is drawn down, and the infinite light of God into the wisdom of the Torah and in the commandments. <coughs> In general, this is what's called charity and kindness. <clears throat> because of God's charity and God's kindness and God's love. So there is drawn down and there is clothed, or in so who the infinite light of God, the chesed into God's love in the world. Kenoda, like it's known, meaning olam chesed yibonah. The world was created from God's love. <laughs> And it's being created from God's love. You have to build this kindness of God. It has to be built. The world is built from wisdom. <coughs> or you can say no. <coughs> we have to build the wisdom. <coughs> like it's written in another place in Shir Hashir. Shekadeh, in order that there could be <clears throat> the infinite light of God in the world, in the emotions of God, <clears throat> the seven days of creation. Like it says, L'cha Hashem Gadula to you, God, is the greatness, the kindness, the power, etc. <clears throat> in order for this to happen, in the beginning, God did it on his own, but from then on, the etaruta dilatata taliamilta, the whole thing depends on us. Asher Kirishan of it says that God made us holy by means of his commandments. <clears throat> he married us with his commandments. He joined himself, God joined himself to us, to the Jewish people with his commandments, so that we Jewish people are chosen to bring blessing in the world. That's what it means the Jews are the chosen people. We're chosen to bring God's blessing into the world, to keep the world alive. Bezeo, that's what it means. At Korban Yilachmi. That's what it means that the sacrifices are my bread for my fire. Shebechin <coughs> Lechem. That's what this idea of the bread. That's the Torah and the commandments that connects the Creator with the creation. Ubechin is Bittel. This bread, this brings about this healthy state of Bittel, of surrender of the yesh, of the physical world, of the sick world, la'ayan, to the oneness of God. Ma'amshich b'chin is gilu sof, the draw down revealed godliness <clears throat> in this physical world. How was this done? By means of the sacrifices. Ishei reach nichoach l'ashem. The sacrifices are God's bread, and that's, <clears throat> there's a pleasing spirit to God. Nowadays, we don't have the sacrifices, but we do have prayer. And by means of our prayers, which that's in the place of the sacrifices, it says, <clears throat> God says, you caused me to eat my honey with my sweet honey or sweet honey, special honey. We give God pleasure. Okay, the Rebbe wants to point out something that King Solomon also tried to point out. And that is the power of the Jews, the special mystical 
mysterious, <clears throat> infinite power that the Jews and only the Jews have to affect God by doing his commandments. This is a, a, a mystical connection um, that there's no mystery like this in the world. That's what King Solomon was talking about in the Song of Songs. <clears throat> the Jewish people, so to speak, they provide for God. <clears throat> ah, but ah, you don't know what God is because the Jewish people aren't doing their job. As soon as the Jewish people do their job, then the whole world will only be thinking about God all the time. That's the idea of Mashiach. <clears throat> Ah, this level of God's bread, it has to be Li'ishai. There's one <clears throat> condition. And the condition is that the Torah and the commandments and the prayers, <clears throat> they become God's bread, but only if they're with fire. The kin is rich fe'esh. You have to have a fire. You have to do have enthusiasm, inspiration. It lavuta nefesh. Arouse your soul when you say Shema Yisrael. You have to elevate your animal soul. What's your animal soul? Yourself. Your normal, human, everyday personality with what you want. You have to elevate it. <clears throat> to be interested only in the Creator. <clears throat> to do its job. This, that's this flaming fire. Because God is the source of life. God is infinitely dynamic and warm. This fire that we're supposed to arouse in our soul, this comes from elevating our animal soul, our daily normal life, <clears throat> our daily normal day-to-day -day desires and thoughts and worries. And to transform them, that goes up like a sacrifice. So if a person comes and says, listen, I have a terrible personality. I get angry all the time. I get depressed all the time. I'm jealous of everybody. I'm lazy. I have all sorts of desires and lusts and terrible things. I can't serve God. So you know, what are you talking about? You just brought to me all of the sacrifices that you can bring to God. I see you lasted over there, a nice big sheep, a nice big goat, a nice big cow, a big ox, right? That's your laziness and your anger and all these these things. That's that's the sacrifice that you can bring to God. That's great. What do you mean? <clears throat> it's a little bit of a problem to bring them to the Holy Temple, right? To schlep a big cow. But nevertheless, that's what you have to do. And not only that, where's the Holy Temple? Wherever you are. Like it says, when you do succeed in taking your natural personality and connecting it to the creator, it says, Achayas Gnosis is a kise. <clears throat> it says in the vision of Isaiah that he saw these holy animals, right, a lion and a all these different angels, etc. And they were lifting up God's throne. Bezeus Michael Akise, and they sweat, it says from the heat or whatever, the throne of God. That the angels, angels only say three times, holy, 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 every day. Why? Because when they say one time holy, they become negated totally. They burn up. <clears throat> and they don't go back. Their soul doesn't go back until after four hours. Then they say holy the second time. It says, so it comes out that three times they say holy, they say holy, this is, this is in the course of the 12 hours of the day. They say holy four hours later, they say holy again, four hours later, they say holy again. But <clears throat> that's the angels. But the Jewish people, <clears throat> they have a greater power. Their animal soul is even greater than the angels. Kichayos knows us because it says that these angels that lift up the throne of God, they lift up the throne and there's, it says on the throne of God is the appearance of man. <clears throat> That's the appearance of man. That's the Jews. Says so the Jews that they were in the form of man <clears throat> were higher than the angels that they're only in the form of animals. So if the animals are burning up to God, <clears throat> the angels 
how much more so when we use our animal soul and our bad personalities and we just direct it to the creator. <clears throat> but there's a drawback, like we said, there's one condition that you have to do this with tremendous enthusiasm. That's what it means, but call me'odecha. Me'odecha is the same letters of me'od as Adam. These are the letters of me'od, namely, you have to love God with all of your being. Each and every person, according to where, where, he, where he's at, right? You get the, the whatever is the person that's, you know, doesn't do any Torah, no commandments, nothing whatsoever. He's totally against God, and he, he's sitting in some bar, and he sees on the tel television that says, today is the day of atonement for the Jews. And the person says, wow, you know, I'm a Jew. Hey, I'm not going to drink this beer. Today is the day of opponent of atonement. I'm not going to drink the beer. He stops drinking the beer for 10 minutes, pushes himself away from the beer. Why aren't you trying to drink the beer? You just finished saying you're thirsty. You just ate a big, wait, a hot pickle or something. I'm not going to eat the pickle. You have no idea how much pleasure God gets from that 10 minutes because that's Bechol Meodecha. This is with all of his being. <clears throat> He's serving God. Each person, according to his level, his level. <clears throat> as it's understood, he can't do that too many more times. You know, each time he eats, a, on, you know, he eats another 10 minutes, another pickle on Yom Kippur, that's already a whole different level <coughs> of sinning. And now he has to do a deeper type of kamoshu atzmo lamayla pichadei tochal nafshol seit. This a person connects to his true self, how he is above. That's called meod, his true. How do you say unlimitedness? Lakol nafesh <coughs> each cursed person according to his ability. He, when a, when a Jew does this <clears throat> something, Torah, mitzvahs, whatever, like in our case, he stopped eating for 10 minutes on Yom Kippur because he realized while well, I'm a Jew that he did something in the Torah, but he did it with all of his being. This draws down chayus, it draws down life from what's called the man that's on the, sitting on the throne. This is what's Aleph Dom. <clears throat> the blood, Dom, that's the soul. Blood, that's the soul, Dom. <clears throat> And you draw into this the letter Aleph, into the Dham. That's Aleph, namely from the level of Soviv Kalamim. You draw it into the Dham, the blood, that's the Mamali Kalamim. Like it says before, in other words, the revelation of God in the world depends totally on us. Ah, but calls it, all this is talking about <clears throat> the Jews elevating to God this, and they do it with all their being, we have to have a little bit of help to do this. And that's the coin. That's the coin, the sacrifices, the sacrifices, namely Aaron. Aaron, like it says, Nachnuma, Aaron, or Moshe together, Moses and Aaron together. They're the ones that actually provide and direct and inspire the Jewish people to have this bittel, <clears throat> this healthy harmony with Orin Sof, with infinite life of God. <clears throat> they can draw it down into. This is what's called the lower unity. <clears throat> so then they can draw down godliness from above to below also, not just elevating yourself. <clears throat> Drawing God down from this level of you are one, God, you are one, you are wise, without any understanding, ending, without any known wisdom. God is a, a wisdom is totally above and beyond ours. And <clears throat> that's the essence of God can actually be revealed in the world to you. The whole world is the gedula, gabur. It's all drawn down into this world to transform. He's hapchus, the whole entire animal soul of the world <clears throat> is unified with God. So it all depends on us doing Torah and commandments with all of our being. Then this gives us an inspiration to serve God further Constantly with all of our hearts. <clears throat> the two hearts, one of them is to love God and to be included in the oneness of God. And the other one is, another type of love is to subjugate our Yetzir Hora, that's because of Kal of Avecha, to subjugate our Yetzir Hora that it also should love God. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this is what it says in the Tanya 
that it's possible to have joy in one side of your heart and weeping in the other side of your heart. <clears throat> this weeping is the bitterness that you have on the past deeds that you did or your <clears throat> urges to keep doing bad. And this bitterness on how about how the soul came down from so high, <clears throat> how the Jewish people rose up in God's thought, and now all of a sudden your soul is so down low and not thinking about God at all, <clears throat> that bitterness causes you to love God with your animal soul as well. <clears throat> That's one type of love, love from your animal soul. But there's another type of love, which is joy. That comes from the other side of your heart. <clears throat> That also below, when the Jew is in this physical world, <clears throat> he can draw down or in so for a whole. So one hand, you have one side of your heart that regrets and feels bitter about how far away it wants to be from God, but you don't do you don't do it. You don't listen to it. <clears throat> and the other side, you have a tremendous joy in your heart. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> from taking physical things in the world and using them for Hashem, not to fight a battle, transforming the world to godliness. <clears throat> if so, you can be very happy. Yogil, Yogil Vismach Mod, you can be tremendously happy with God, that God is dwelling within your Torah and your commandments. That's what it means, loving God with all of your hearts. <clears throat> that you make every effort into the world in, in possible, not to listen to your selfishness, and on the other hand, God helps you in every possible way to give you joy in feeling his oneness in the world. That's what it means, Yismach Yisrael Ba'osav. That's what it means, be happy Jews in your deeds. Those are the commandments. They draw godliness down <clears throat> from God's <clears throat> private domain into our public domain that the world itself becomes negated to God. And that's what it means, Levavtani. We'll talk about this next week. That's what it means that we arouse God's heart. That God says to the Jewish people, you have aroused my heart. What does it mean that you Jewish people have gone against your nature <clears throat> to love me and to not follow your own urges? This is something that is a, a novelty. And this arouses God's heart. That's the idea of the sacrifices. <clears throat> so we've just learned how much power we potentially have to make God happy and change the whole entire world, even one of us. And so it will be with Mashiach now. Have a good week. God bless you. And next week we'll be in the middle of Elul and we'll continue learning. Amen. Thank you. Say good night to your son for me. He's already in bed. <laughs> oh, okay. Say good morning, Dorian. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom.